Genesis um Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 makes it clear that God already knew ahead of time that Pharaoh would not let his people go. God knew that Pharaoh would be stubborn and not respond positively to him. God knew that Moses was going to face a hard and tough king. God knew that Pharaoh was going to give Moses a tough time and make Moses despair. God knew that Pharaoh was going to push Moses and the people of Israel to the edge of their faith. God knew ahead of time the difficulties, the hardship that Moses would face. Though Moses did not know, he only gave this hint to Moses that he knows that the king of Egypt will not let his people go unless by a mighty hand. And I wonder why would God, already knowing that Pharaoh would do that, why wouldn't God do something about it before then? But the fact is that God already raised Moses for uh, Pharaoh for that purpose, just like he raised Moses for that purpose. God made Moses to be born, allowed that Moses be born for the purpose for which he was born. Thus also did he permit the birth of this particular Pharaoh, not even the Pharaoh that started the maltreatment of the Israelite, but this particular Pharaoh that increased the torment, the sufferings, the hardship of the Israelites. God allowed his birth because that was the purpose for which he was born. Because already, even before he was born, God has seen that this was a perverse, a wicked man that would not have mercy. So God needed such a person to fulfill his plans and his purpose now remember that when god was sending jeremiah to the people of israel in the book of jeremiah i think that that has remind me let me go to jeremiah chapter one i believe yes yeah 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 was not yeah 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 god when God was telling him not to be afraid, it's because he knew there was something to be afraid of. Because God will not tell you not to be afraid if there is nothing to be afraid of. In fact, if you go through Jeremiah chapter 1 and you read through verse 18 and 19, though in verse 18 God talked about the protection that, that he has given unto Jeremiah against the kings of judah and his princes and priests in verse 19 god made it expressly clear that the people to whom he was sending jeremiah were going to fight against him but he also said that he would be with jeremiah he would be with jeremiah wow 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 now this brings me to this fact that the people of Israel being slaves in the land of Egypt, God had already prophesied it, prophesied it, said it to Abraham in the book of Genesis. When he told him just before Abraham died, and he said Abraham can go to his grave in peace, he said to Abraham, no, no, now that was not when just before he died, when he made the covenant with Abraham, when he made the covenant with Abraham, he told Abraham that Abraham should know that of a certainty, that means there was nothing that could stop this fact, that the descendants of Abraham will be slaves in a slave, strange land for 430 years. This is awesome. Now, what does that tell me? It tells me that Wherever God is sending you, whatever God is asking you to do, he already knows and is aware of the difficulties that are there, of the difficulties, of the hardship, of everything that you will encounter. He is not going to leave you alone. He knows he has prepared you. The reason you were born to go through what you go through is because God needs you to go through that to be able to do the work that he has prepared ahead of you. Okay, I understand what Jasmia was saying the other day, that sometimes God allows you to go through certain situations, not because of you, but because of those that God was going to send you to. 
In fact, in fact, in fact, Moses was born the way he was born, raised the way he was raised. Uh, interestingly, by his own mother, and in him had been planted all the seeds and the prophecies of the Israelites, uh, making him know that he was not an Egyptian, but an Israelite. In fact, yeah, that what I was saying earlier on in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, and God said to Abraham, not positively that your descendants will be strangers, uh, dwelling as temporary residents in the land that is not theirs, Egypt, uh, and they will be slaves there, and will be afflicted and oppressed for 400 years. Oh, sorry, I said 430, but for 400 years. So no amount of prayer could could have stopped this because God has decreed that it to be so, and He said, "But I will bring judgment on that nation whom they will serve, and afterward they will come out with great possession." So, 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 so. Moses worries about being able to speak. Moses worries about not being believed by the children of Israel. Moses, we are well human but unfounded if only he had known ahead of time that god had already planned this that this was the timing of god. nothing could have caused this to happen before time because until 400 years were completed salvation would never have come to the israelites so that brings me to genesis chapter uh, exodus 2 verse yeah 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 verse 23 down to 25 which says that however after a long time nearly 40 years the king of egypt now that was a king that actually started the punishment on the israelites and the king of egypt died and the israelites were sighing and groaning because of the bondage and they kept crying and their cry because of this living ascended to god but know that there is wasn't that they were crying to god they just cried so which brings me to that note that i made that god always hear the cries of the oppressed and the slaves even when they do not expressly cry to him god hears because he's a God of justice. And the Bible says in verse 24 here that, and God heard their sighing and their groaning and earnestly remembered his covenant with Abraham. What was the covenant? That after they had been a slave, he was going to bring them out. Huh? And with Isaac and with Jacob, and God saw the Israelites and took knowledge of them and concerned himself about them. Wow. Knowing all, understanding, and remembering all. Oh, wow. God concerned himself about them. This is just like the redemption plan. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, while we were all headed for hell, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ did not die for the godly. He died for the ungodly. While we were yet sinners, God made provisions for our salvation, for our redemption. So while the Israelites were groaning under the bondage without even calling to God, God concerned himself with their affairs for their salvation. While we were there rotting in sin, God has concerned himself by making provision for salvation. Because we do not know, the truth is that man does not really know the terrors of hell. And it's not like man is going to end up in hell. There is a lake of fire that even hell will be cast into. This is horrible. If men know the horrors of being against God, they will repent. If Pharaoh had known how terrible it was to set himself against God, uh, ha, maybe he would have repented. But he didn't know. He thought that he could fight against God. He thought that he was smarter than God, just like the devil, his father. But the truth is this, that the devil knows he can never win against God. Yet he continued to set people against God. Foolishly, man that has the spirit of God, instead of listening to the spirit of God, continually agrees with the devil, devil bringing upon himself the curse upon the devil, God of mercy. Oh, Lord. Hey, coming back to what I was saying, that when God calls you, when God gives you a commission, when God tells you to do something, 
Be not afraid because God has already prepared everything. So every difficulty, every hardship, no matter what it is uh, that you encounter on the way, every pain, disgrace, insult, everything that you encounter on the way, abuse, whatever it may be, God has seen it ahead of time and has prepared everything ahead of time in a way that you can handle it. Because you were created for that purpose, praying not to go through them is a waste of time because it is part of your function it is part of your training it is part of your building for you to be able to effectively and effectually carry out the work of God one it is part of your training and your building process to keep your faith in God and not in yourself because Moses tried it on his own and he failed woefully that was why he was scared and he said who am I that I should go and bring out the people of God who am I that is why this baffles me when people jump and they say that God called them and they jump happily. Every man that has been truly called is always afraid, in humility, scared to accept the call of God because they know and they ask themselves, who am I that God should send me? So when you come across somebody that says, God called me and he's running there, hey, hey, watch out, that person has called himself, not God. That is just by the way. Moses was so scared because he has seen, he has, he knows what it is. And he just was not ready of himself to go back and face the terrors that were there. He just, he felt inadequate. He gave all the excuses. Then he suddenly realized that he was a stammerer. <laughs> oh, faithful father, how great thou art. Lord, I just want to thank you for my life. I just want to thank you, Lord, for every pain that I have been through, for everything, Lord. Thank you for it was a training process. Lord, wherever I have missed the lesson, Father, Lord, help me to remember, oh God, and help me, Lord, to incorporate it and to know that, Lord, you were only using it to build me. And to bring me to the place that you want me to be, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that hence you open my eyes, O oh God, to see. And give me the heart to understand, O oh God, at all times that you are there. You said to Moses that you will be with him. And you were with him. You said to Ezekiel that you will be with him. And you were with him. You're telling Jeremiah that you will be with him. Did not stop Jeremiah from being thrown into the dungeon, into the pit, where he was without food for days because he spoke your word. Were you with Jeremiah there? Yes, Lord, you were there. Amazing, amazing. And yet Jeremiah was in the dungeon without food and without water for days. Lord, when you send a man, sometimes, Lord, we lose focus because we think that it is all bed of roses that we find. Yet it is not so. And when you choose, this, a, when you choose a man to do a work, it's because you have equipped and prepared such a person for that purpose. And Lord, even along the way, you fortify the person, you build the person. Lord, if only we can be patient to know that you are always there, even in the thick and in the thing, that you don't let go of those that you have sent. Oh, merciful God, help me to live in the consciousness of this word. Lord, just help me to live in the consciousness of the fact that in every situation, even in this my circumstance, in this situation, Lord, let me walk in that perfect and constant knowledge that Lord you are with me that there is never a time in the business that you have placed in my hand that I'm alone and Lord help me Lord to commit every of my affair every one of them may I not have an affair that Lord you are not involved in in every aspect of my life, Lord, every detail and every minute and second of my life, Lord, let me consciously involve you, Lord. Father, be involved with every part of my, my life. I want you, Lord, to be involved with every second of my every day. 
every moment of my every day because that is what you want lord and that is why you made me and that is why your hand is upon me so lord i submit my days and my time my hours and my moments every one of them wherever i am with whoever i am for wherever i am there for whatever purpose, let it be that, Father, you are there with me, that where that is where you have me be, when you will have me be. Especially now, hence, O oh Lord, for the days of errors are past, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. The days that I did not realize nor known. Father, I pray that, hence, O oh God, I will remember that you are with me at all times in the name of jesus holy spirit of god take charge father i pray that you let your spirit just continually guide and direct my footsteps in the name of jesus and lord take not your anointing ever from me lord god take not your anointing ever from me father sustain me continually by your power lord in the name of jesus lord i just want to say thank you 